Welcome back to Daily Connections. If you're living in the U.S. as an immigrant or a visitor, navigating the laws of your stay can be quite challenging. So, here with tips on making your time here in America a success is immigration attorney Yaniv Lavi with the law firm Finer and Lavi. Welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure having you. There's a lot of language, a lot of technicalities, and I know one of the first things that people sometimes get caught up on is the difference between a green card and a visa. Can you explain that for me? Sure. Green card is the right to stay in the United States permanently. So once you have it, you can permanently reside in the United States, work, and file petition for your relatives. Eventually, in most of the cases, that can lead to you becoming a U.S. citizen. Okay. Now, visa is the right to stay in the United States temporary. Most of the cases you apply, I mean, actually, in mo all of the cases, you have to go to your, the U.S. consulate in your home country mm -hmm. and apply for a visa. Okay. Depending of your intention, of your intention, you know, what do you want to do why in the you're United States? Exactly, why you're coming. So if you're coming for work, mm -hmm. or if you're coming for business, or if you're coming as a student, or tourists, mm -hmm. that's going to, you know, that's the, you know, you're going to get issued a visa according to that. And they have a time limit on them, correct? Most of the cases, Most yeah. of the cases they yeah. do. Okay. What are the biggest mistakes that immigrants purposefully or inadvertently may make when they enter the U.S.? Okay, the first thing, when you're coming to the United States, you have a meeting or, you know, you're going you're gonna to see the immigration officer at the mm -hmm. border. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't recommend people, you know, to lie to this immigration officer. Because if he catch you lying, there is what is called summary removal proceedings. And you might be removed yeah. for five years. Your visa can be canceled. And it seems so obvious, but I know that people do it all the time. And, and I think sometimes it's even out of nervousness, the pressure yeah. or something. But don't lie, tell the truth, because you don't want to get caught later exactly. on. Exactly. Now, the second thing, don't overstay your status. So mm -hmm. if you came with a tourist visa mm -hmm. and you got up to six months, don't overstay. Once you overstay by one day, your visa is void. Mm -hmm. And you're losing your rights to extend or change your status to another status. So let's say after five months you find a school that you want to join. And, and your visa was only good for six months. Exactly. So you have to file for your change of status on time. We, we normally recommend to do it 45 days beforehand. To give yourself some extra room because exactly. once that visa expires, you're then an illegal immigrant, correct? Exactly. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. I know you also talk about uh, entering illegally to begin with <laughs> as something that you don't recommend doing. No, never. Because once you get here, you don't really have the rights or the opportunity to move from that status, correct? Exactly. I mean, when you enter illegally, I mean, you're losing a lot, of, a lot of rights, and one of the rights is to adjust your status. This is a process when you try to convert yourself from one status to a green card, mm -hmm. becoming a permanent resident. Mm -hmm. And even if you married an American citizen, you won't be able to do that if you entered illegally. Mm -hmm. So do it by the book. Exactly. If I have relatives from abroad that want to travel here to visit me, what should they do? What's, what are the steps you would take them through? Okay, the first thing I would check with the U.S. consulate mm -hmm. in their home country okay. on whether their country is part of the visa waiver program. The now, what is the visa waiver program? Okay, the visa waiver yeah. program is a program of uh, the Department of State mm -hmm. which allows certain uh, countries, certain, which allows people from certain countries to enter the United States without a visa. Without needing a visa. And I've exactly. run into that myself in travels going to different countries. I know that, for example, Argentina didn't require a visa when I traveled there, exactly. but Brazil did. So there's different countries, so check with your own consulate and find out what the requirements are and what the relationship is between exactly. your country and the U.S. Exactly. Now, if, you par if your country is part of the visa waiver program, mm -hmm. so you don't need a visa, you don't need to spend time, money, <coughs> and to go through the bureaucracy of the U.S. consulate in your home country, and just come here with, uh, without a visa. Now, are you still limited, though, on how long you can stay in the U.S.? Yes. When you come with the visa waiver program, I mean, mm -hmm. with, without a visa, mm -hmm. so your entry is limited to 90 days, Okay. normally, 
And another issue is that you're also waiving your rights. And you're waiving your rights oh. to extend your status or change it to another so status. So at the end of those 90 days, if you've gone through the visa waiver program and you decide you'd like to extend your stay, you don't have that option. You're exactly. going to have to leave the country and then attempt to return exactly. in order to stay longer than, or in order to be here longer than just that amount of time that you could be here. Whereas if you got the visa, you could 45 days before it expires, exactly. you were saying, apply, correct? Yes. Now many people come here to get, you know, with, with a visa waiver, and they just get, they can travel to Canada, for example, for mm -hmm. a few days, a few weeks, and then, then re-enter and get another 90 days. Interesting. I'd like to talk a little bit about people staying through sponsorship. I've heard about that before. I've, ha I've had a friend who talked about that possibility. Can you talk about those people who are employers and sponsorships are available? Sure. Explain that to me. Sponsorship, I mean, an em a U.S. employer or company can file application, I mean, visa application and sponsor foreign employees either on a visa mm -hmm. or for a green card. Normally, okay. you start with a visa for three years or, or two years, and, you know, within this process, you can apply for a green card also. I mean, many people, what they do, you file for, let's say, an H-1B visa, which is visa for a specialty occupation if you're an accountant or a lawyer or in the IT business. Mm -hmm. You come here on H-1B visa. It allows you to stay up to three years, and you can extend it for another three years. And in parallel, you can apply for a green card. Oh my, but, and then you, but you've got to keep your eye on all of that and make sure exactly. that you've got your paperwork together, but that, that does give you that option. Now, other than a work sponsorship, are there other sponsorships, like private sponsorships or family ones? Yeah, there are family. A U.S. citizen can, or a permanent resident can file petition for his relatives. Okay. And there is also self-sponsorship. For example, if you invest in the United States, if you invest $1 million or more in a business, you have to employ also more than 10 employees. U.S. employees? Yeah. You, oh, you may be eligible for a green card. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, I understand that there are some laws that work in favor of immigrants concerning their stay in America that help to protect them if they find themselves in a jam or in a, in a questionable situation, starting with the workplace. What, what if I begin and I've got a job and a <coughs> visa to be able to work as an accountant, and then suddenly my employer threatens to take my job away? What, what can happen there? Okay, there, there are two things I would like to emphasize. First of all, in most of the cases, people can port from one employer to another. So let's say you're working for employer A, mm -hmm. and you're not satisfied, he's not satisfied, the company is closing down, you can port to another and employer. And you say port? Does port that mean, mean transfer? transfer. Yeah, okay. it's a legal word. Okay. So you can transfer. <laughs> you can transfer. You know these legal words. <laughs> That's why you're here to explain. But yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so you can go to one workplace exactly. to another. Exactly. You need the second employer to file a new petition for you. Okay. Say, you know, send the, the appropriate forms to the United States government, to the immigration, and tell them, look, I want to transfer this now, person. If does it have to be within the same field? Like I gave the example, accountant. Does it not necessarily. Does someone have to be an accountant. Not necessarily, job? but it no. depends on the on the on the visa. If it's an H one visa, it must mean specialty occupation. Okay. Doesn't necessarily have to be in the same field. Interesting. Now, one more thing I would like to say is oh, that yeah. even if you're in the process of getting a green card through your employer, mm -hmm. you also have the ability to transfer yourself. That's reassuring okay. to know. Yeah do not have to stay in a difficult situation exactly. because of the process. How about if we get a little bit more personal? What if we have a woman um, who is in an unstable situation at home and she's found that her husband or perhaps a partner is saying, I'll get you deported if you leave me. Does she have any leg to stand on? Sure. I mean, if you're talking about people, you know, spouses that are married to American citizens, mm -hmm. I mean, it happens a lot that uh, American citizen or permanent residents try to take advantage. They tell you, look, I mean, if you don't do that, I'm going to call the immigration. If you don't do that, I'm going to call the police. And people 